Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I stand, Mr. Speaker, in support of the motion to borrow U.S. $102,128,294 from the Export Import Bank of the Republic of China, Taiwan. Mr. Speaker, I support this motion because I understand that this money is to support the budget. The budget which was passed eight months ago. I support this motion, Mr. Speaker, because I trust this Minister for Finance and I am confident that this Minister for Finance will guard the interests of the people of St. Lucia. Mr. Speaker, I am confident that the 277 million EC dollars will be spent well because between the time we were placed here by the people of St. Lucia and now, the Minister for Finance has handled the job of stopping the decline in this economy and at the same time pro providing investments in our social sector and in our communities very, very well. The job of stemming the slide and at the same time ensuring that our people in the communities, Mr. Speaker, that the people of St. Lucia get some cushion from the rough times. He has handled his job very well. Mr. Speaker, let us recall what happened in 2019, even before the COVID-19 pandemic. Let us recall, Mr. Speaker, that growth, the growth rate of this country slowed in 2019, Mr. Speaker. And again, that was before COVID-19. I wish at this time, Mr. Speaker, to just take a moment to thank the Republic of China, Taiwan. Thank them for the partnership, Mr. Speaker, at a time when there is hardship all around the world, at a time when it is difficult for many countries who are our traditional friends, Mr. Speaker, who assisted us in difficult times. They too are having their own difficulties as a result of the challenges which were, which, which were posed by COVID-19, but also as a result of so many challenges, the Ukraine, Russia, Russia war, and so on, Mr. Speaker. For, for our traditional friends, it's been very challenging. And for the Republic of China, Taiwan, to continue to assist us in this way, I think is commendable, and we want to thank them. I want to thank Ambassador Chen. Mr. Speaker, I want to thank the Ambassador, Ambassador Chen, for his leadership. And just recently, Prime Minister spent some time in Taiwan, and I am sure at some point, Mr. Speaker, he will explain to you how he had a great time in, in Taiwan. So I, I want to really thank the, the, <laughs> the government of Taiwan for their support. So Mr. Speaker, this motion is also about confidence. It's about confidence, Mr. Speaker. Of course, there are challenges. Look at the challenges which we are having with violent crime. Look at the challenges in the economy. Look at the challenges with food prices and the challenges with the, with the, with the price of fuel and so on. There are challenges, Mr. Speaker. We knew that when we got into government. We knew the challenges which, would, which we would endure because of the, the wastage of the last government. The people knew that, Mr. Speaker. But you know what, Mr. Speaker? We have the resolve to endure. We have the resolve to work with the people of St. Lucia and to endure. It is not easy. We know it is not easy. And so when we come to this parliament to seek um, the authority of the parliament for this loan, my colleagues before me explain to you, Mr. Speaker, and explain to the House how this loan will finance the budget and how the benefits of the budget would accrue to our constituencies and to the people of St. Lucia in general. And Mr. Speaker, I know for the constituency of VA4 North, there are several initiatives from last year's budget which will benefit our constituency. But I just want Mr. Speaker to, to very quickly 
tell you why I am confident. I am confident because on the 26th of April 2022, just eight months ago, this Minister for Finance, the Member of Parliament for Castries East and our Prime Minister presented, our, presented a budget to the people of St. Lucia. In his budget address, he highlighted a number of, of initiatives and also he highlighted what the government would do to continue some of the projects which we found. And if you just very quickly, Mr. Speaker, go to page, from page 17 of the Prime Minister's budget address, the Prime Minister indicated, for example, let, let us go even before page 17. I want to start on page 13, Mr. Speaker. And the Prime Minister spoke about the challenges which we found. The challenges of, of the, the, the slow e economic growth rate, the challenges of poverty, the fiscal challenges. And I have said before in this House, Mr. Speaker, that when the former Prime Minister became Minister for Finance, he found an excellent example of how to deal with the budget deficit. He found an excellent example. The budget deficit went down to 1.3% of GDP. But Mr. Speaker, what happened after that? A ballooning of the budget deficit. And this Minister for Finance now, in his budget address on page 13, indicated the challenges. But what did he say? Between pages 13 and, and 21, Mr. Speaker, he indicated what we would do as a government to, 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 to face those challenges. He indicated that he would set up an economy for the youth. And he spoke about the youth economy. What is the update on this? The update is, Mr. Speaker, we have come to Parliament and formed the Youth Economy Agency. So work is progressing on this eight months after the Prime Minister's statement. If you go to page 17 of the budget address, the Prime Minister spoke about the Millennium Highway. And we know there were several challenges with the Millennium Highway. Obviously, the work on the Millennium Highway was slowed. And we see some progress now. Not as much progress as we want, Mr. Speaker. We believe by now there should be a lot more work on the Millennium Highway. But there is some progress there. And I know the Minister for Infrastructure and the Prime Minister are doing their best to ensure that the contractor um, hurries up to do the, the good work which the people of St. Lucia are waiting for on the Millennium Highway. The Grosley Highway and Secondary Road Improvement Project. We remember what happened with the last government. And I can tell you, Mr. Speaker, there is progress on this. With discussions with the QATs, the Viewfort Water Supply Project, which was started under the last Labour Party government. And there are major advances there. And I must segue a bit to say, Mr. Speaker, that part on this project, I am having active discussions with Wasco so that the people of Bellevue and Piero in Viefort North can benefit for, from this project with a water line coming from the Grace side to go, a treated water line to go to the Piero and, and the Bellevue side. The Hiwanora International Airport Redevelopment Project. We have reported before that a committee was formed and reports have been submitted and work is ongoing. An announcement I am sure will be made very soon. On page 22 of the Prime Minister's address in April, he spoke about the St. Jude, Jude Hospital Rehabilitation Project. You know what has happened with the St. Jude Hospital Rehabilitation Project. Work has started since November 1st, and work is ongoing. If you continue to look at the, the Prime Minister's address, you can, you can go to, to page 27, private sector construction in tourism. There are several initiatives in tourism, Mr. Speaker. If you go to page 28 of the Prime Minister's address, community-based tourism. We came to this house, we debated the community-based tourism bill, and I know that an agency is being organized, and very soon the people of St. Lucia can benefit from the community-based tourism initiative. On page 29, the Prime Minister spoke about the orange economy, and Mr. Speaker, he spoke about the, the enchanting physical beauty of our country and the creativity of our people. And he spoke about carnival and other aspects of the orange economy. What did we find in August, Mr. Speaker? Look at how we have 
worked with the artists and the people of St. Lucia, and look at what happened to the celebration of emancipation, Mr. Speaker. So it's a whole new kind of governance we, we are looking at. And this is why I'm confident, because when you look at the, the Prime Minister's address in April, on April 26, and you go through what has happened in the economy and what has happened in the country, you can see there is progress. The infrastructure aspects, the library market and square project, this is ongoing, there's progress there. Expanding agricultural out out output, the reemergence of bananas. We saw what happened with that. We have some difficulties and some challenges because of freight and so on in England, but you saw the expansion in the Trinidad market, and that is on page 31. We can go on and on and on. So this is why I'm confident, Mr. Speaker. Mon ya chai confiance. Nous vini ici a prêter l'argent pou bije a. Tout se poje a te za a bije a. Depi a vui premier ministre la pale an le an chai bagay ki kai fete an ekonomi an. Ek la ou gade speech premier ministre la, la ou toune se paj la, ek ou gade sa premier ministre la te te pou met jan set li si, ek ou gade sa ki za fete, ou ka wè se an premier ministre ek an gouvernement ki serye. L'autre façade là, il n'y a pas de dire que nous venons prêter l'argent. Le Premier ministre là qui était là avant, lui qui prêtait plus l'argent et lui qui tenait plus la parole devant ça. Il a prêté l'argent, j'ai payé cette ici, il a mené cheval, il a cette ici, il a galopé cheval avant, il a mangé l'hôpital. C'est ça qu'il a fait avec l'argent cette ici. Mais le Premier ministre là venu ici et nous a prêté l'argent pour dépenser. An le se poje a nou bete an bije a. Epek an chay se poje sa la za koumansi. Kon sa mweni an chay konfiyans. I want to say to you, Mr. Speaker, that in health, there is a lot of expenditure which we must carry out in health. In other words, we've had a lot of debt coming out of COVID-19. You heard the Prime Minister, Mr. Speaker. And up to now, there are debts. In August of 2021, Mr. Speaker, when we came into government, we had outstanding commitments of $7.628 million arising as a, as a result of COVID-19. We owed, and we still owe, many of the quarantine facilities. There are many suppliers of medical services, people who supply reagents, people who supply medicines, and so on. And especially during the COVID-19 time, they supplied us with medicines and so on, and we still owe many of them. Mr. Speaker, people who, who provide services in dialysis and who provide services, um, other services, the Tapio Hospital or the private facilities, these are all very important partners in health. And Mr. Speaker, we inherited a lot of debt and we are going to, we have, the Prime Minister has, commit, has made a commitment that we are going to see to it that we pay these debts. And it's important for this local, <coughs> businesses for the health sector to to continue to have confidence in the government and the ministry of health so that when we ask them um you know when 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 we ask for supplies and so on that they have the confidence that we are going to pay so we found a lot of these debts and this loan will assist us to pay these debts mr speaker i'm very happy with with any time i hear infrastructure i think of the roads in view fort north and I'm, I'm very happy that this loan will assist, and I'm looking forward um, certainly to assistance in, in, in these matters. So, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, I know it is not easy. Nous savi pa easy. La nou an toa gouvernement, nou te di jan peyi set li si, ki denye gouvernement, pou an la jan nou, yo bay jan lot peyi, kome, kome, kome milyon. Ou tan minis, minis, Mam Parlement Central Castries Saidi, kome, la yi komanse konte la jan, denye gouvernement a gaspiye. Yi pase 200 milyon dola. Ek komanse, yi te komanse konte. Konsa, gouvernement sa, avek premier ministre sa, ka pan tan nou, ek nou ka pije pa la, pije pa la, pou asire ki nou pa mette set misyen an difikilte, ek a mem le ya, nou ka develope ekonomi ya. So I support this motion, Mr. Speaker. I look forward to the benefits of this budget. And you saw the benefits already accruing to the people of St. Lucia. And we are going to continue to work diligently to ensure that we save the economy and we keep 
this country for the benefit of us all, according to the member for Sufre. Thank you very much.